it's an amazing thing to be a part of. Um, growing with the program while growing as a person and as a player and bettering myself with the program, it's been an amazing thing to witness and also be a part of. We have a motto that goes by climb, commitment, loyalty, integrity, mental toughness, and brotherhood. I, I follow those those rules and um, it means a lot. It means bonding, uh, making memories, loving one another, and being there for one another outside of football. The only thing that I can describe Ethan is alpha. Um, in the weight room, he is an animal. Um, and on the football field, if he ever gets his paws on you, uh, it's, it's tough to get him off. Uh, but out, outside the field, man, it is the uh, gentlest, uh, most charismatic person that you've ever met. He's got a great smile. He's got a great laugh. Uh, he's one that is kind of the life of the party a little bit, makes a lot of jokes and always uh, cutting up. But he knows when the helmet straps on, it's a different dude. Uh, and that's the kind of thing that you want. You want you want really good kids and really good men. Uh, you want those as football programs, but you need a little nasty to play football. And uh, Ethan embodies that. Uh, he's a uh, he, he's a very physical kid. He doesn't shy away from anything. Uh, and also, he's intellectual. Uh, he's intelligent as 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 it comes. But uh, Nick, or, uh, Ethan's uh, greatest, I think, a, a characteristic about him is a lot of people follow him, and uh, he's. He uses his platform as about as well as you can as a leader within our program. It's been it's been um, something that's been great to watch the development of this program and um, being a part of it is also great. Making memories with my teammates and stuff and uh, building chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> Off the field, Ethan is he's actually a really good kid. He's he's very kind. Um, He's always been really just considerate of other people around him. It's, it's almost the total opposite of what he is on the field. He's like this gentle giant uh, off the field, and then on the field he just turns into this beast that just, you know, like mows everybody over. So <laughs> it's really interesting uh, to see him on Friday night because you know, every day I just see how dedicated he is, you know, just with his meal plan and eating and just the consistency with working out. And so just on Friday night, it's just a good, you know, opportunity for all of his hard work to come to fruition. And he just gives it everything he has every day. To a player is definitely exhausting sometimes, but I have to do my part in it, not just showing up at practice. And I also have to put in work on my own time and uh, get my body right so to so I could be in best shape to perform at a high level on both sides of the ball. It's a great thing to uh, be a part of and to to see it and I'm excited to to be able to showcase what I bring to the table as a football player. And I definitely want to play college football and for me it, it doesn't really matter what college I go to. College ball is college ball. I want to use it as an education to further but like better myself and follow a career path but uh, whichever college is my best option, yeah. Uh, something that people don't know about Ethan, he's actually kind of scary. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> like going into dark rooms or like just unfamiliar environments like haunted houses and things like that. He's like actually kind of skittish in a, in a weird way that <laughs> I don't think people really know that. <laughs> Interesting. If it's like a dark, like there was one time, it was like a haunted trailer or something like that. And it was like, you literally just like walked around the trailer, but it was dark and it had stuff hanging from the ceiling and stuff. I did not go in it. That's I, was too, I was too scared. Yeah. To. That's amazing. Uh, I want to achieve, I want to achieve winning. That's, that's all I care about is just winning. And from a team perspective, just fighting through adversity and don't let losing or us doing bad during games just affect how we play throughout the rest of the season. Freshman, freshman and sophomore year, I started off as quarterback. Mm -hmm. uh, first time ever playing quarterback, never played before. Uh, being in there with Darren and uh, Cade, it, it was something new because I know I wasn't as, as experienced as them, but I knew I could learn from them. And I just I see them every day before the games or before practices, like recovering and stretching a whole bunch going in the weight room and just chilling. 
and I wasn't used to that because I wasn't used to the, being as a quarterback. And it was it was a big difference for me. But learning from them and just talking to them how they are, it, it puts my mind on like how big of a spot the quarterback position is. So. Did you ultimately make the decision yourself to go to running back, or, or did it get made for you? Yeah, it kind of got made for me, but that's okay. I mean, they they use me everywhere. It's it's just something they they like to do with me, and I'm totally fine with that. What's that mean? I mean, just for you personally, knowing that you are a, a flexible piece of the offense, that you have a lot of different roles you can play in and be productive. Uh, my coach is trusting me. Uh, my player, the players trust in me. And, my ability to go out there and play any position they want me to play. So Nick, Nick came to us originally as a quarterback, um, and was as dynamic of the quarterback he had. He could run it, he could throw it. Um, when he first started, uh, he was real quiet. He still is quiet in some, in some sense, but he carries himself by the way that his body language carries. He's not a big rah-rah guy. He's not one that um, – that needs to be yelling and screaming all the time. He's one that kind of leads by example. Um, and where we've seen him grow from the 145 pound, you know, 5'9 kid to now the 203 pound, 5'11, uh, running back, wide receiver, punt return, kick return guy, uh, has been phenomenal. He's, he's got a strong home life. He's got a, you know, and part, of, part of Nick's growth, I think, uh, is his little brother that uh, is obviously his biggest fan. Zakai is, uh, always up here with him. He's always looking up to him. And I think Nick is really cognizant of that. He knows that he's got little eyes on him. And uh, I think Nick wants to show his, his family and his brother, like, this is the way that you do it. Um, and what I can appreciate most about Nick is, uh, as a 18-year-old, he is a 28-year-old mentally. Uh, he, is, he understands uh, accountability and responsibility. Uh, he's a kid that as a as a girl dad uh, that you would hope that your daughter finds somebody like a husband for him one day that's he, he is the model of a student uh, a student athlete but not only that but just a man in general uh, he's one that uh, you know you hope one day that your your daughter would uh, would, would find somebody with as much character and uh, as quality as he is so as his coach uh, it's almost like being a dad. You're just proud of him. Uh, when you see him be successful on the field, you can't help but smile uh, because you know the amount of work that he's put in and you know the amount of time that he has uh, invested into being really good at, at something. And uh, Hopefully it pays off and he, you can see him on Saturdays uh, next year. I'm wishing for the season to be better for me. And, um, I do want to play college football and play at the next level. And not just make it there, but actually play there. It's more than just football at the end of the day. Football is not life. Um, it's, it's a game that we love, and, but it's not life. It's more build, building relationships, um, friend, being here with your friends, coaches, learning from them, and, um, and asking them how they are. Yeah. Tell me about Nick Owens at home. What's, what's the home life like? Uh, honestly, just morning, eat breakfast, um, maybe work out and I have a job. I work at a gym and hang out with my girlfriend or friends and that's all. Your favorite game so far since you've been free? What was it? Um, probably the Laverne game. We did lose on that game, but it was it was more of just like learning from that game and we knew that coming to the game we had the big head thing we were gonna win and everything, but it's just more it's more than that. It's more than it's just playing the game the way it is and not not thinking about more than what it should be or not thinking about how my stats are gonna be throughout the game. Just working with my guys. Even when we're down in games like that, we're thinking how are we losing or why are we losing and we just gotta honestly just focus and I felt like that that game helped us throughout the rest of the season. Learning to not just overtake that opportunity and not take it for granted. The growth that he has from freshman to senior year is a lot. I mean, he's matured a lot and he's gotten stronger and bigger and um, his, his um, just his personality and just the, 
like for him to know the game and stuff like that of football, he has grew a lot and he's just been, you know, such a great student, a great kid, and just a great athlete by far. How much fun is it to watch him on Friday night? Oh, nights? it's a lot of fun. You know, I love it when he always gets the ball or when he's hyping up his friends or his teammates on the sidelines. Just like, you know, it's just a lot of fun. He just it's just exciting to watch him play. Even if he don't play, you know, it's just exciting to watch the game, period. This was kind of cool hearing the seniors, you know, give back to you guys, right? Yeah. What'd that mean to to you to hear what he had to say about you? Um, just, just very sweet, you know, like he's really not a talkative person or like expresses feelings or emotions a lot. So for him, for them to do this, for the moms and for how he just, um, speaks about me and stuff like that and he thinks that I don't know a lot about sports I do you know he's been play long enough for me to know a little bit you know like even though like he's just my baby so like when I see that you know the coaches or somebody doing him wrong or anybody you know I just want to take up for him and he just thinks that I don't know the game a lot that's all it is how crazy is it that this is his senior season it's crazy it's unbelievable it's bittersweet I mean, you know, I love that he's becoming, you know, a, you know, becoming an adult, but it's also just bittersweet. He's always going to be my baby no matter what. <laughs> we may say it too often here on the Green Hill Sports Network, but my oh my, how this season has flown by. We're a month in and the Green Hill Hawks now at 4-0, taking on the Lebanon Blue Devils at 1-3. and And after this evening, the midway point of the 2024 season for Green Hill, they want to walk out of here tonight with a homecoming victory and 2-0 in Region 4-6A. For the Lebanon Blue Devils, they're looking to get back on track. I'm Christian Capozzi alongside Chase Owens, Brady Ray on the sideline, our entire Green Hill Sports Network crew bringing you play-by-play -play coverage of Green Hill football. Glad to be back at home, and like we said, not going to be here too often here in the coming weeks. The Hawks getting set for three consecutive road games along with fall break as well with their bye week. They will not be back home until October 25th against the Cookville Cavaliers. Cannon snap, give NOJ one quick move and steps into the end zone. Touchdown, Green Hill, a beauty of a drive. 13 plays, marching it down the field, and they retake the lead with 3.04 left in the first quarter. Quarterback draw, oh has room 45, to the 40, Cannon steps outside oh. to the 35, there he goes to the 30, to the 20, foot race to the 10, steps out of a tackle to the 5 and into the end zone! Touchdown, Cannon Burrows! Oh my! First and 10, Green Hill with 3.23 to play in the first half. They're down by seven. From the 11 and 35 yard line, two receivers either side. Burrows back to pass again, pressure in his face. Steps up at the pocket, heaves this one deep, looking for Nick Owens Jr. He grabs it at the goal line, and his third touchdown in the first half for N.O.J. Another big play. Wow.
a carry here. Right side has the first down. Ball came free, and Will Butler's falling on it. Oh, man, Edwards had touchdown on his mind, but did not hold on to the football. Butler ripped it out, recovered it himself, and balled a green hill on an excellent play by Will Butler. And Cannon looks to his left, now puts Cartwright in motion, snap. Cannon keeps himself. The quarterback sneak spinning forward, falling forward, and falling into the end zone. Touchdown, Green Hill! Not one, not two, but three times for number 18. And the Hawks take a two-score lead with 3.42 to play in the third. Second and goal, they motion Owens out of the backfield, snap. Cannon looks to pass, instead runs. Cannon hit at the one, Cannon spins forward. And for a fourth time tonight, the first Hawk ever to have four rushing touchdowns in a game, Cannon Burrows for a Green Hill touchdown. The Hawks caught off guard in the first half. Hadn't given up a point in three weeks. Had only given up seven points in four games. They were tied 28-28 at halftime, but they come back out in the second half, score 24 unanswered points, and get the win over the Lebanon Blue Devils. A final score of 52-28. It's another good night to be a Green Hill Hawk. A 5-0 start and 2-0 in Region 4-6A.